the logics etc goes wrong and some of the artificial intelligence which is being used by the robot robots at various time and uh, some type of bug is there or some by some type of bug is introduced in between it can lead to havoc uh, more details about the threats and the opportunities will be talked about by, uh, by professor manol lal who is a well known figure and he has been director in the school of computer science at egnu and formerly he was in delhi university also with us with these words i must thank professor mn huda dr ritika and all the participants Uh, who are being attending this webinar conducted by bharti vidyapeet and other societies uh, from last uh, almost 6 months we have been conducting this this knowledge distribution sessions will move on in uh, on virtual mode till we are not confident enough that we can move uh, we can meet physically i hope uh, uh, professor huda has already announced india com 2021 in the month of march i hope by that time uh, this pandemic will be over and once again uh, i recall on 15 last 15th or 16th march we had a last physical uh, conference and i hope uh, another physical conference will be there uh, of india com 2021 in march 21 at bharti vidyapeet and most of us will be gathering there with these words thank you dr ritika over to you Thank you, sir. I shall now request Professor M N Hoda, Director, Bharti Vidya Peet Institute of Computer Applications and Management, B V I Camp, to address the participants with his inspiring words. So, good evening to each one of you. At the outset, let me take opportunity to welcome my very honourable guest and valued speaker for today's. webinar that is robotics in everyday life threat or opportunity professor manohar lal ji professor manohar lal ji needs no introduction however dr ritika will give a formal introduction of him but let me tell you that he has been so passionate about sharing knowledge about seeing to it that everyone in all respect should understand at least the fundamentals of the topic and almost last 40 45 years which he has devoted in this in different spectrum of the academic life not only to the students coming to the formal educational system to which we primarily cater he has also been engaged with the informal education system where the challenges are very high that is a kind of his passion and out of his passion he is still busy every time learning a new topic when you ask him to deliver something on very old topic he will say you know no no i am learning new and you i can have a webinar on new topic that's a kind of passion he carries and that's how i say that one has to be passionate about it the learning will come automatically and that's how bashir badr ki ghazal ki ye char misre char pankhtiyan passion ke liye main hamesha sunata hu jo ye kehti hai bashir badr ki ghazal ki char pankhtiyan के आंखों में रहा दिल में उतर कर नहीं देखा आंखों में रहा दिल में उतर कर नहीं देखा कश्ती के मुसाफिर ने समंदर नहीं देखा अगर हम कश्ती में चलेंगे तो समंदर में कितनी गहराई है वो हमें कहाँ पता चलेगी तो ये टेक्नोलॉजी ऐसे ही है आंखों में रहा दिल में उतर कर नहीं देखा कश्ती के मुसाफिर ने समंदर नहीं देखा जब से चला हूं मंजिल पे मेरी नजर है जब से चला हूं मंजिल पे मेरी नजर है राह में कभी मुड़कर मील का पत्थर नहीं देखा और मनोहर लाल साहब के बारे में तो मेरा ये कहना है कि उनकी मंजिल हमेशा बदलती रहती है हमेशा अपने बेंचमार्क को वो ट्रैवल करके आगे अनबीटन बेंचमार्क बनाते रहते हैं वो हमेशा ट्रैवलिंग में होते हैं हमेशा अपनी जर्नी आगे बढ़ाते हैं सो थैंक यू सो मच प्रोफेसर मनोहर लाल जी फॉर हैविंग ज्वाइंट मी फर्स्ट एंड द सेकेंड आउट ऑफ यूर बिजी शेड्यूलिंग फॉर टाइम टू डिलीवर दिस वंडरफुल वेबिनार आई ऑल्सो टेक दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू my all the friends from different professional societies professor vyas professor subrata mukhopadhyay will be joining in some time from now he had some urgency today professor subramaniam krishnamurthy is already there in almost every webinar and then uh, many other people from iit thank you so much i can't take name of all those people i was going to uh, uh, in a cursory glance towards the attendees so many senior people are among attendees as well so i take this opportunity to welcome all my participants from different parts of the country and abroad my dear friends this topic robotics in everyday life 
Dr. Nitika has very rightly uh, established the foundation of this topic. Let me tell you, whatever are the challenges, whatever will be the threat, but robotics means automation in our day-to-day -day life is the only way of life. There is no other way of it. And that's how I keep saying that change is the only constant phenomena on this earth. Nothing else is constant. And if we do not accept changes upfront, possibly the market forces, the changing ecosystem will change us. And that's how many examples are there that technological changes, if organizations have not accepted well in advance, you can see the future. Uh, you All of you know that once upon a time, maybe 10, 15 years ago, Nokia feature phone was a world leader in terms of customer penetration, in terms of the uh, pride, in terms of the robustness of the product. And Nokia feature phone at that climax refused to accept Android refuse to accept the change, where is the Nokia now? Despite the fact that they have got all changes incorporated and they deliver all kind of smartphones, they have all kind of smartphones in their profile, but still they cannot get that leadership place. You all know that once upon a time, Yahoo was the world leader, Google offered them, but they refused Google, where is Yahoo now? Nowhere. And in the same way, you all know the world leader uh, was Kodak, they refused to digital cameras and the kind of the changes which were happening on technological front. Where is Kodak now? So the changes are very important and we have to change. So despite the threat which robots, Professor Manohar Lal will discuss that career which robotics is going to bring in our day to day life. But we can't, we can't afford to say no to robotics. That's how it's uh, so much pervasiveness it is going to bring in our life. So when there is a threat, we have to understand how to deal with that threat, right? and for that again, uh, I will. Uh, I would like to sensitize you in a poetic way that insan ghar badalta hai, libas badalta hai, vishte badalta hai. Kya bhi parishan kyo rehta hai? Why we keep on facing threat? Because we do not change ourselves. Insan ghar badalta hai, libas badalta hai, vishte badalta hai, dost badalta hai. Kya bhi parishan kyo rehta hai? Because we don't change ourselves. So we have to change ourselves. और यही भूल बड़े पोएट गालिब ने कहा कि यही भूल गालिब उम्र भर करता रहा धूल चेहरे पे थी और मैं आईना साफ करता रहा हम टेक्नोलॉजी को और रोबोट को अगर हम ब्लेम देते रहेंगे तो फिर हमेशा हमें थ्रेट ही महसूस होगी और हमेशा हम हैड होंगे हमें इस थ्रेट को एक अपॉर्चुनिटी की तरह ट्रीट करना है और इस थ्रेट के साथ आगे बढ़ना है आई वाज रीडिंग अ जर्नल अदर डे एंड देन आई रीड that the robotics are not going to change the life of the educated people. This is going to also change the life of uneducated and village people. I could see there that a thousand dollar which a, a farmer can buy easily. And when farmer will buy that thousand dollar robo, the robo will do all dimensional job with the farmers at this moment are doing on their field. And then the, uh, with the help of the robot robots, the farmers will become the tomorrow's field manager and the actual worker job will be taken by the robotics. So anything and everything which can be decoded, anything and everything for which some program can be developed, can they will be automated and can will be uh, uh, integrated or embedded as part of robotics. That is the beauty of the robotics. I will not speak on this because we have a very learned speaker today to speak on this topic, but would like to tell you that you have to be passionate about the technology. And uh, at this moment of time, I also would like to thank to all the participants from different parts of the country who keeps on encouraging us by attending all the webinars. There are five more webinars open for the registration. If you have not uh, registered for any of those webinars, please register. On 2nd of November, we have a foundation day of an institution, a 67th foundation day of an institution of electronics and telecommunication engineer and that 67 foundation day we have we are we have organized an evening symposium a registration for evening symposium is also open on the same link that you have registered for this webinar and on that day of the symposium you will be happy to note that we have organized three wonderful talks and on the, that too on a very cutting edge technology one talk is on and that the all three technologies are going to be related, are going to be uh, connected, that how these technologies will come to our rescue while dealing with COVID-19. 
kind of situation or with any pandemic kind of situation. So basically, the title of the symposium is Emerging Technologies for Effective Management of Pandemic. And the first talk in that will be on 5G, how 5G can be beneficial or how 5G can facilitate us to effectively manage the pandemic situation. Second talk on 2nd of November will be on uh, um, uh, IoT, how Internet of Things can help us to deal with the effective management of the pandemic. And the third talk is yet very important, that is a digital twin. And digital twin is going to become so popular in today's time of pandemic that almost not only the again urban people, even the rural people will prefer to have the digital twin for the purpose of managing such kind of pandemic or for the purpose of doing the many, many of their work. So if any one of you have not registered by now for those kind of for those FTPs, do register for those FTPs first. Second, if you are not part of any of our WhatsApp group on which we keep on sharing the details, the logging credential of the uh, webinars, please join any WhatsApp group. And in the chat window, we will share the link for the WhatsApp group so that you should not keep on writing me every time that I didn't get link to join and please send me a link. Because email most of the time because of additional security from Google and many other service providers are going in a, in a junk mail, going in a spam mail. So WhatsApp is a better mechanism to get connected with that. And lastly, I would like to say all of you who are old participants who have been participating in our other webinars, you know the process of getting certificate. But still, I would like to repeat it. At the end of the, towards the end of the webinar, first you will lock the meeting room so that no new people should enter. We have to restrict the new entry. And then after, I will share a Google Drive link. That Google Drive link is a feedback link. You have to submit your feedback. The moment you will submit your feedback, your certificate will be generated based upon the data which will be submitting in the feedback form. So whatever, in whichever way you want your name to appear, in whichever way you, you want your organization name to appear in your certificate, accordingly you write in the feedback form. If your organization name is too long, please understand we have left only one line for the purpose of organization name. So you can abbreviate the name of the organization. In an organization name, you can write it of your college, your school, your organization that you are working. If you are superannuated, then also you can write your previous organization name. If you are a student, you can write your school college name, uh, your organization name. Once the data is kept in feedback form using that data only, we will be generating certificate, PDF of the certificate will be created, and on your email ID it will be delivered. Now the question is, if you do not receive an email ID, so my suggestion to all of you will be, do not leave the meeting room. Till 7.30 we are having technical talk, after 7.30, from 7.30 to 8.30, this meeting room, this webinar room will be converted into a call center. If you are not receiving this uh, certificate on your email ID, you can interact with that window in this meeting room with us. We will check the server what is the problem. But this entire server, entire process on the server has been configured in auto mode. So we again, like a properties manner, auto mode, and the according to the APIs have been configured. If you are not getting, we will try to find out the reason and we facilitate you so that you should certificate. But I'm sorry, if you leave the room without getting certificate. And then you keep on writing me on my WhatsApp or my email, my mobile phone or message, etc., etc. We are not in a position to go through to those details at this moment. We will be seeing those details. We will be reading mails after 8:30, and 8:30 this feedback will be deactivated. Even the server which we have configured for giving you automatic certificate will also get the also get deactivated. So when we will read email. We have no mechanism to give you a certificate. So I can help you out. So what I do normally, I simply delete all those emails, all those WhatsApp messages, because I am reading those messages after I and we can help you out. So the certificates will be given only during the process from 7.30 to 8.30. And my dear participants, if you are watching this program on YouTube live, then please understand we are not giving certificate to any participant to any future. For the purpose of getting knowledge, you are most welcome to watch it at YouTube. But please do not request me for certificate. If you want certificate, you should exit from the YouTube and come back to this uh, Cisco website.
meeting lo this may to be the problem so that with this not in cross knowledge the process of this information sharing is a process which brings us from uh, darkness to light is a process which brings us from uh, uh, ignorance to knowledge this is hame andhere se ujale lane ka tarika hai ये हमें एक इग्नोरेंस से नॉलेज की तरफ लाने का तरीका है और इसको बड़े शायर ने यू से रिलेट किया है कि उजाले अपनी आंखों में महफूज कर लो उजाले अपनी आंखों में महफूज कर लो मीन्स की पावर ऑफ नॉलेज एज इंटीग्रल पार्ट ऑफ योर पर्सनैलिटी सो उजाले चूंकि आगे अगर आप पावर ऑफ नॉलेज नहीं रखेंगे तो बिकॉज ऑफ इनलिटरेसी बिकॉज ऑफ इग्नोरेंस यू आर नॉट इन ए पोजिशन टू फेस द चैलेंजेस विच आर गोइंग टू बी फेस बिफोर यू सो so, उजाले अपनी आंखों में महफूज कर लो बड़ी दूर तक रात ही रात होगी मुसाफिर हो तुम भी मुसाफिर है हम भी किसी मोड़ पे फिर मुलाकात होगी थैंक यू सो मच फ्रेंड्स लर्निंग मस्ट कंटिन्यू डिस्पाइट डिसरप्शन डिस्पाइट ऑल राउंड डिसरप्शन प्राइमरली ऑन अकाउंट ऑफ कोविड एंड ऑन मल्टीपल अदर अकाउंट सो कंटिन्यू लर्निंग थैंक यू सो मच ओवर टू यू डॉक्टर रितिका I, I, yeah. I'll just want to add one line that this, uh, this month's uh, CSI journal is on the theme of robotics only. Okay, then oh, that will be available great, great. on our CSI web portal csi-india.org. Uh, great. Think today evening by tomorrow morning it will be available. And Dr. Ritika has already taken a lot of pains in editing that journal. csi communication for computer society of india so all the participants can go to that web our web portal and they can see various kinds of research papers which has been there on the theme of robotics thank you sir uh, yes, thank, thank you. you thank you sir uh thanks to all the participants i would now welcome us amongst us our expert speaker Professor Manohar Lal, Director, School of Computer and Information Sciences, IGNU, New Delhi. Professor Lal has teaching and research experience of more than forty-eight years, having taught at various universities, including University of Delhi, JNU, and South Asian University, from January two thousand to January thirty-first, two thousand twelve. He was Director, School of Computer and Information Sciences. Indira Gandhi National Open University New Delhi Earlier he has been professor and head of computer science department and director computer center at MDU University Rohtak from 1996 to 1998 and at HP University Shimla from 1993 to 1996 a product of IIT Kanpur IIT Delhi and University of Delhi He completed his M.Tech in Computer Science and Engineering from IIT Kanpur and pursued his second PhD in Computer Science and Engineering from IIT Delhi. Earlier, he completed his Masters and PhD program in Mathematics from University of Delhi. During 1982-83, he visited North Carolina State University for his postdoctoral work. He has delivered more than six hundred hours of lecture through educational channels, including EduSat and Gyan Darshan of TV and Gyan Vani of radio. Professor Lal has long research experience. Earlier, he worked in the area of error correcting codes, a branch of data communication. Currently, he is working in the areas of theoretical computer science, formal methods in software engineering. and automation of reasoning he is a member of a number of national and international academic and professional bodies and is a reviewer for a number of national and international journals in mathematics artificial intelligence and e learning i welcome you to this session today sir i now request you to kindly enlighten the house over to you sir Uh, Manohar sir, you are on mute. Okay, okay please. Uh, good evening, everybody. First of all, I am very much thankful, Dr. Vitik Sen, for such profuse introduction. 
And I am also very, very thankful to my dear friend, Professor Eman Hoda, whom I call management guru. And he is really not only management guru, he is the guru of many things, including computer science and all that. And it is our affection which has asked me to come over here. Also thankful to Professor R.K. Vyas and Professor R.K. Seni and other panelists and dignitaries for bringing me for this occasion. I feel honored especially as the big institutions like Computer Society of India, Bharti Vidya Peach, and IEEE, IST, IET, double ITV are involved in it. I'm also thankful to the faculty, officials, and members of these esteemed institutions. I'm also grateful to all these scholar participants who have kindly spared their valuable time for this webinar. Last but not the least, I'm thankful to my daughter, Meenakshi, for Dr. Meenakshi Shridhar, for training me in the use of various software tools required for interacting for video conference. Finally, before starting the formal lecture, I say a few words about my style of presentation. Despite wonderful advancement in virtual meeting technologies like Cisco WebEx, the facility of eye-to-eye -eye contact and visibility of the gestures and motions on the faces of the speaker and other participants, the facility which is available in con conventional physical meetings is yet to be fully in the case of a speaker using slides in virtual meeting. Therefore, I have incorporated most of my ideas in writing in the slides, requiring little explanation. Friends, now coming to the topic. Friends, robotics and in general, any technology does not exist in a vacuum or in isolation. It involves a highly dynamical social cultural and technological complex. Each of these dimensions, along with many other dimensions, evolves in a very subtle, dynamic, interactive environment. Since the first great technology, probably use of a tree branch to force out ants or sharpened stone to kill a bird, and afterwards agricultural technology, each has had social-cultural aspects. In such a form, we can afford to discuss the technology along with the, some other aspects of its environments. To repeat, friends, the discussion will not be about robots merely as technological artifacts, but robot as a socio-cultural technological artifact. After brief hurried introduction to the technological aspects of the robot and robotics, including some working definitions, we will discuss in detail the social cultural issues, including implication for humanity of technology in general and robotics in particular. There are innumerable issue, issues in, associated with robotics. Whatever we discuss is just tip of the iceberg. Friends, coming to the top, uh, uh, Dr. Ritika Vasan, your photo, this caption is not going from the slides. Can you remove it? Hello? Hello, Dr. Ritika Vasa. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. You are yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, only thing is that I am not, uh, I may have some difficulty in uh, delivering complete lecture because this uh, caption is there anyway, I'll try to. Friends. Uh, the topic which was given to me was robotics in everyday life, threat or opportunity. However, I have slightly modified with the permission of my friend, Professor M. N. Hoda, random thoughts on. And the reason for that, as I've just mentioned also, that any technology or any academic discipline, I say in general, is linked to almost everything in life, every other academic discipline also. And it is not possible to, to talk all aspects, whether of robotics or a technology or even an academic discipline. Therefore, I have to be very choosy. And there, in the light of this fact, I have taken only a few of the topics which are related to robotics. And this is why I have added the title 
random thoughts on. So I hope this will be acceptable to you. <coughs> Next, I have divided this talk. Ah, Dr. Ritika Vasan, your this is not going. It may create a problem for me. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Dr. Ritika, anyway, I start, but it will be having some difficulty with me. The talk. Yes, sir, you may move your mouse on the window and you can uh, push the window up. Okay, uh, so I can push the window. Oh, good. Now it will do. Okay, thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, you know, we older people have uh, a lot of difficulty in using uh, Now it's wonderful. And it is have... absolutely fine, sir. Uh, so, uh, even my granddaughter teaches me many times all these technologies. Uh, so, yeah, thank you very much. Other uh, talk may be divided in four major parts. First of all, in order to put the subject matter in context, I'll talk something technological issues around problems. Then the second part, which is major part, I'll discuss social, cultural, academic linkages to robots. The third part, challenges, threats from technology, robots to humanity. And the last part is challenges, research issues for robots, conclusion and reference. Now it is not moving, this is another problem. Sir, sir, you you can just there is a close button. You can close participants and chat both. So, uh, where, where is this? Uh, I'm not able to find. Oh, आप आप एक सेकंड अपना अपना माउस का कर्सर को बिल्कुल टॉप पेज की तरफ ले जाएं बिल्कुल टॉप पे ले जाएं ये जो कर्सर है इसको कहाँ ले जाऊँ मैं बताइए बिल्कुल टॉप टॉप पेज पे ले जाएं सबसे ऊपर ले जाएं टॉप राइट टॉप राइट टॉप ऊपर टॉप ऊपर बिल्कुल ऊपर सेंटर आपको वो सारे बटन्स दिख जाएंगे वो नहीं पर मेन चीज ये है अगर अब मेरी स्लाइड मूव नहीं कर रही नहीं नहीं सर मूव करेगी ओके हां मूव कर रही है आप स्लाइड पे क्लिक करोगे तो स्लाइड मूव करेगी हां अच्छा ओके सो नाउ आई कम टू द फर्स्ट पार्ट टेक्नोलॉजिकल इश्यूज अराउंड रोबोटिक्स सो फ्रेंड्स इन दिस अंडर दिस टाइटल आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग under this this i conceptual and terminological explanations and working definitions of robotics robot and related concepts then i'll talk about laws of robotics types and applications of robots timeline history of robots robots in human imagination friends just for the sake of definition and completion we'll go through this one there are two parts one is working definition and the other is term so first of all i take the working definition robotics is the branch of technology that deals with design construction operation and application of robots that is intelligent machines that can help and assist humans in their day to day lives and keep everyone safe robotics term that is the world first time it was used for this concept In 1941, science fiction writer Isaac Asimov first used the word robotics to describe technology of robotics. Robots. Okay. Now next we come to the definition of robot. Again, it has three parts: working definition, the term, and concept. One definition is intelligent machine. that can help and assist humans in their day to day lives and keep everyone safe second definition it is embodied artificial intelligence an intelligence which perceives its environment in order to gain and accumulate knowledge number 2 additionally actively participates in it as its component third part of this intelligence is while participating it attempts to optimize its gain including preserving its identity and the last part of this intelligence in the process it has to observe behavior of others and perceive others as collaborators and competitors and thus becoming social even cultural entity
Robert working definition and concept. Robert was first used in 19, the term Robert was first time used in 1921 by Czech writer Kapik in a play called RURR, -R, Ransom Universal Robots. The plot was simple, man creates a robot to replace him and the robot kills him. In 1926, the film Metropolis features the first movie, Robert Maria. In 1948, Gray Walter created first robot, Elmer and Elsie, also known as Turtle Robots. The robots were capable of finding their charging station when their battery power ran. Next definition, concept. The concept of Robert is as old as civilizations, including those of Egypt, Mesopotamia, India, China, Greek, Turkey, and Peru. We'll discuss later. And timeline of history, this particular link is there. It gives the timeline for the working definitions of artificial intelligence. Friends, just now I define that Robert is an embodied artificial intelligence just for the sake of completion, I'll speak a few words about artificial intelligence and also about technology. Working definition of AI is the study of how to make computers do things, at which at the moment people are cut. AI is the study of the phenomena of intelligence in human beings and even in nature in general. Comments. Robotics or AI have not occurred just out of thin air. These are culminations so far of the technological endeavor since ancient times in a twig or sharpened was used for the purpose. Briefly, we look at the concept of technology. Friends, we will have working definitions of technology. Technology is anything, tool, technique, methodology, process, or even an idea that comes into existence through explicit human thinking and endeavor. Explicit human thinking. Number two, enhances affects human capability and capacity. Another definition of technology as science of life is the collection of techniques, skills, methods, and processes used in the production of goods or services or in the accomplishment of objectives such as scientific investigation. Technology can be thought of also as the knowledge of techniques, processes, etc., or it can be embedded in machines, computers, devices, factories, which can be operated by individuals without detailed knowledge. Friends, Asimo, as I told, he gave the term robotics. He defined some laws which are really essential. Robotics, robots remain useful for humanity. And he gave three laws. The last law was added later on. Isaac Asimov wrote three laws of robotics. A zeroth law was added later. Law one, a robot may not injure a human or humanity through an inaction or allow human being to be injured. Sorry, please. Law two, a robot must obey orders given to it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with a higher order. Law three, a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with a higher order law. Law zero, a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm unless this would violate a higher order law. A study of mobile robots, sorry. Okay, robots and related disciplines. Friends, as I mentioned, no academic discipline or even technology exists in isolation. Robotics is also related with many disciplines. I mentioned a few of these. The study of mobile robots is an intrinsically in interdisciplinary research area that involves mechanical engineering, computer science, electric cognitive psychology, perception, neuroscience, and me mechatronics, the combination of mechanical engineering with computer science, computer engineering, and electrical Classification of robots and application domains. Next, we'll take this issue. Friends, robots have been 
classified in at least many ways, but we'll take two ways. And the first is depending upon whether the robot is fixed or mobile. Mobile robots are further divided into three categories, aquatic, terrestrial, or airborne. And terrestrial are further divided into wheel or leg. Friends, examples of mobile robots are mobile robots are robotic vacuum cleaners and self driving cars. Mobile robots may be terrestrial robots like automated cars, aquatic underwater exploration, amphibious robots that move in both water and in the ground, and aerial robots, particularly the drones are very, very well known, and drones have really provided very useful service in this Corona-19 uh, epidemic situation. Friends, the concept of drone have already been used for delivering food, medicine, etc. in this COVID-19 period and earlier in calamities to places inaccessible by the road. A little bit of history of drone. In 1917, during the First World War, U.S. developed drone weapons but were not deployed before 1980. Drones emerged in the modern era in Second World War as surveillance craft. The concept of drones may well date back to 1849 when Austria attacked Venice and it uh, dropped 200 incendiary balloons in the form of drones. Then the second classification is on the basis of application. Robots can be divided as industrial or service robots. Industrial robots are further logistics, that is to carry heavy loads from one place to another automatically. And manufacturing, we'll have some examples of manufacturing automatic vacuum. And services provided by the robots are medical, home, educational, and defense. Friends, this is an example of automated robots in a factory industrial robots where the no human is involved in some of the tasks which are routine in purpose. And the robots are also used to transport goods to and from their houses. Additional flexibility is required when industrial robots interact with humans. Hence, service robots assist humans in their tasks. These include boards at home like vacuum cleaners, transportation like self-driving cars, and defense applications such as recon science. Some subcategories to humanoid robots, educational robots, medicine Hello. robots in a rehabilitation training, etc., and elderly and child care robots. Friends, this is a fully automated robot which is for, used for weeding out from the fields. All types of robots have been found useful and effective in hazardous and inaccessible civil environments in disasters and natural environments. Some of the services which robots are doing nowadays are bank terrors, insurance claims, financial analysis, inventory managers, benefits and compensation managers, construction workers, cab drivers, airplane pilots, middle management rooms, manufacturing workers, food service and journalists. Friends, these are some of the examples Already in use or near future applications of robots include fully automated home delivery by robots, as you are seeing on the right hand side. A receptionist in a big restaurant organization, like including airports, hospitals, and industries. And the third type, which you are seeing in the lower part of the right hand side, child, disabled, elderly. Care robots. Friends, I mentioned two state of art robots. Sophia is a social humanoid robot developed in February 2016 by Hong Kong based company Hansen Robotics. Sophia has participated in many high profile interviews. In October 2017, you'll be surprised. Sophia became a Saudi Arabian citizen, the first robot to receive citizenship of any country. In November 2017, Sophia was named 
the UNDP first ever innovation champion. Another robot. It is the stage of art, the most advanced robot which is available in the market. The name is T9, the world's most advanced programmable robot designed and developed by in 2020 by Robots and Robotics Company Limited, a leading innovator in the field of AI and robotics. T9 is available in the consumer market. It is the first robot that features all the following functions. It automatically converts from a robot to a vehicle and from vehicle to robot in a stunning, smooth and seamless movement. It has bipedal walking in the robot form. It has race function in vehicle form, programmable code development. Robot control commands by either vice or app. So these were the two state of art robots which are available. Friends, next important topic is socio-cultural technological issues. Topics to be discussed under this part are culture, cultural revolutions impacting intellectual pursuit, culture robot linkages in ancient civilizations, culture robot linkages in modern times, how technology has shaped altered culture, culture of sharing and caring robots and robot academic linkages. Friends, culture. For ev our everyday actions, decisions, behavior, we only sometimes do follow formal rules like left hand drive or, or standing during national anthems. But most of our everyday actions, decisions, behavior are conducted not only informally, but even unconsciously. For example, when crossing a road, say in a crowded city like Delhi, we do not apply S is equal to UT plus half it is square. While interacting with our teachers, elders, children, juniors, superiors, we do not consult rule books while pursuing alternative products, etc. No formal rules are used. These informal, mostly unconscious rules which guide our behavior form a part of our culture. The informal, mostly unconscious rules, heuristic skills, knowledge, etc., which guide and in turn are getting modified continually by our actions, behaviors, hopes, apprehensions, appre appre aspirations, creativity on a social group level is a part of culture. In my opinion, one of the most significant concepts in whole intellectual pursuit, whether scientific, technological or otherwise, is that of culture. Culture is the base of whole intellectual enterprise. Robotics in the context of culture, how we will do robotics depends on our culture. Explanation of the concepts in the title, the concept of threat and opportunity depend upon what we value in our lives collectively. For example, it is our culture or value system which will determine whether we prefer our successors, our biological progeny to intellectual progeny, namely robots, to remain superior or otherwise, it will be determined by our culture. Culture is that part of social intelligence which guides and directs tacitly or intuitively our actions, mundane, intellectual, spiritual, which involves unconsciously and is transmitted through time between generations. In view of significance of culture in actual enterprise, we look at some experts in the field for definition and discussion of culture. Friends, Abid Hussain has been one of the most respected social scientists. He has written this book to which the preface was written by President Radha Krishna, who was also a great friend. He was one of the great philosophers. According to him, Culture is a sense of ultimate values possessed by a particular society, as expressed in its collective institutions, including mental entities, including religion, morality, frameworks for education, justice, and the material objective collectives like music, literature, folk song, drama, films, educational, legal systems. In view of the significant culture and cultural revolutions, in intellectual enterprise, we further illustrate these through some historical example. Friends, I tell you, 
that cultural revolutions have changed the perspective of generations. The first example is really a sort of tragic example. The most notable example in, is from Europe, 16th and 17th century of Bruno and Newton. All of us know Newton, but not many of us know Bruno. Bruno, an Italian, was burnt alive for speaking against geocentric universe in 1600. Friends, I will tell that at that time, the church and the science, church was dominating all aspects of life, including political and scientific. And the church believed that the earth is the center of the universe. And Bruno said, no, it is not the center of the universe. It is an ordinary planet. And he was remained in jail for 10 years and he was asked to he desist from saying things. But he said, no, I will not deviate from what I mean. The earth is not the center of the universe. And for that, he was burned in 16, February 1600. But on the other hand, Newton was granted FRS, which is the highest honor in sciences, in 1672 for saying the same thing more so. So there was a difference of 70 years. During these 70 years, through the efforts of rationalist René Descartes and a French empress, uh, Francis Bacon, an Englishman, and other contemporary thinkers, a cultural revolution happened in Europe by which cultural thinking had changed, by which science was freed from church or religion. Friends, I hope you understand what is the significance of culture in our everyday life, including the scientific efforts. One person was burnt, but after a cultural revolution through which the sciences were freed from the clutches of church, the same thing was said by Newton, and for that he was awarded the highest honor. Next, another very uh, remembering sort of cultural revolution. Friends in China, it was freed by the Communists in 1948. And 49, sorry. And up to 1978, Mao and his colleagues were used to ride cycles, wear very rough clothes, etc. However, in 1978, Deng became the health man and he started a sort of cultural revolutions. It's the Chinese leadership started in the most costly cars to encourage consumption for the sake of their economy. What I mean to say that whatever China today has, whatever progress it made, it was a cultural revolution which was started by Deng in 1978. Before that, they were against consumption. So friends, these two examples illustrate how the culture makes a difference to a nation or a society. Another one, I'll talk, cultural difference. In Western culture, person, glory, and hence historical sense is quite old. Alexander used to go to wars with historians, coin designers, minters, gem carvers, painters, and therefore their history for at least 600 BC is well recorded. Please, their history, you can tell even that uh, Newton and uh, Alexander was born in May and 300, like that. But that thing is not in India. But you look at the Eastern thinking. Eastern thinking did not have historical tradition, but legendary tradition which has been groomed in the use of powerful imagery. And hence there had been easy acceptance of purely imaginary concepts like zero and infinity. Friends, I may tell that in Europe, even up to 15th or 16th century, they could not accept the concept zero. They had, if they accepted, they had a lot of difficulties. And infinity was really a very difficult concept for them to be accepted because they believed they did not have the imaginary power of thinking, but we Indians have. So th that is how the cultural differences. Westerners have very good history and we have very good imaginary power of the concepts like this one. Cultural differences within academics are also there. There is a very good book, Two Cultures by C.P. Snow.
there he says that the culture or the big the approaches which are followed by scientists in the humanity these people are different the difference between sciences and humanities the humanities allow human imagination and vision to think of and construct alternative worlds which don't exist worlds not any we say so far and possibly improbable about entity they can think of a world which consists of entities which nobody has seen nobody probably ever seen but humanities people write novels literatures etc even they make films about the worlds which are non existent have never existed but on the other hand the sciences are about this world about studies of recurrences patterns predictabilities about actual generally not imaginary or major concerns of science so within academics also there are two cultures and therefore the outcomes or outputs of the two disciplines are quite different nature cultural impacts of roberts for this we may read robots in society society in robots mutual shaping of society in technology this is a book i'll send these slides to professor kuda and you can get this reference from link is is in ancient traditions friends don't think that the robot is a new concept robot have appeared throughout the ancient cultures they we as i said we human beings imagine things which may not be existing but we aspire for them and the robot has been part of our literature in ancient times in literature of ancient civilizations robots occur repeatedly in egyptian in ancient egyptian divinities were made of stone metal etc which have animated powers etc similarly in the put this scholarly literature uh, they uh, there is description of humanoid automata crafted from metals that recite sacred texts in a cloister which housed a fabulous star etc the third is in greek mythology there is a lot of description of the robots and in early chinese lore also uh, there is uh, any imitations of animals in domain the implications of human automata so you can see in all the ancient civilizations concept of uh, at least the aspiration for having robot like things friends for more details we can read this book in the links friends now i come to culture robot in modern times so far i was talking culture robot linkages in time the danger of the past was that men become became slaves the danger of the future is that men become robots meaning human beings are becoming more mechanical and emotions are governing less and less their behavior another effect is what is called post truth friends this is cultural effect in one line i may tell post truth means that we want to listen to that news which appeals to me for example if i am bjp supporter i listen to a particular channel if i am a congress supporter i listen to another channel what i mean to say post truth means that period in which we are not after the actual truth but the truth we like it to be and it was designed in 2016 particularly after 2016 united states presidential election particularly it was written about uh, the present trump so cultural robot linkage in modern times that the modern period we have started believing in the truth that we want it to be now friends in the modern times because i am discussing culture we say this robot i have already discussed the ancient cultures we say this robot now i discuss one of the most well known generation we say this robot millennial culture or the we say this the 
modern technology uh, as i mentioned earlier also robots are the culmination of the technology since ancient time when a tree twig was used to extract ants it is not overnight so in the modern times modern technology including robotics have created a culture which is called millennial culture millennial culture or generation y are those were born roughly between 1980 and 2000 because of available technologies during their youth like internet world wide web ubiquity of mobile phone social media online business selfie culture they differ culturally from the earlier generations in many significant ways they are multitaskers or connected tech savvy curious to know many things instant gratification and recognition work life balance and flexibility diversity in business and enterprise friends see they are a group of people they are hardly talking at all the right hand people are on a dinner and they are so near but so far it is also a part of the millennial culture and you see the left hand the man is laughing the old that, that he has gone mad but now he is alone but not lonely similarly there are cartoons on the right hand side us friends now i come to some more serious shaped or altered culture culture of sharing i am talking of scientific research and how the culture of the modern technology is enabling sharing or culture of collaboration in scientific and Means because of the technology, because of the internet, because of the world wide web, because of the robotics, the International Space Station program launched in 1998 involves space agencies from many countries, and it is because of the technology of internet, world wide web, robotics, etc., that they are able to collaborate very efficiently with our own. Secondly, Human Genome Project. it is really a successful project which have created wonderful they have traced the genome of almost it is a collaborative project which was started in 1990 because of the technology i want to emphasize it is the technology which enables it and now last of this polymath project polymath project is a collaboration among mathematicians to solve important difficult mathematical problems by coordinating many mathematicians to communicate with each other on finding the best route for the solution the project began in january 2009 on uh, thomas gower's blog when he posted a problem and asked his readers to post partial ideas and partial progress towards the solution this experiment resulted in a new answer to difficult problem since then polymath project has grown to describe a particular process of using an online collaboration to solve any math because of the technology friends culture of sharing keep it at the instant of a button we get lot of information and it is the spirit of sharing which jimmy wells and larry sanger started that now without any cost other earlier we might have to have purchased books thousands of rupees and still we may not get that novels friends on the left hand below sir tim berners lee his father of worldwide web and his first condition was that it must be ubiquitously available to everybody on earth equal basis had he desired he could have earned billions of dollars he could have been the richest man but he said that it would be free of cost to everybody we should salute sir tim berners lee for this but it is effect of the technology friends on the right hand below side we see bill gates and azim hashim prem ji you may be knowing prem hashim ji prem ji has contributed two third of his total wealth to the welfare of the indian people bill gates is doing world internationally through his uh, uh, gates foundation 
honor of his his parents and all that so friends this culture of sharing is also coming because of the technology and next i discuss what is the contribution of robots to academic life friends in good questions sometimes is more important than answering any non questions and uh, new technology including that of robots raise many good questions for scientists philosophers mathematicians and other intellectuals to in investigate their earlier notion of life intelligence have become outdated in the view of the fact that now inert silicon things have life like properties they may have intelligence like properties and therefore they ask the philosophers and other intellectuals artificial life scholars have been challenged with either questions or old questions with new perspectives what is intelligence what is life what can be known and what cannot be known it is seen what is identity of person when gradually one by one parts of a person are replaced after how much replacement one becomes a different person friends these are the questions which the robot and latest technologies have put before the intellectuals to answer to reinvestigate their earlier notions of life intelligence etc so it is a great contribution creating an environment it has done as a contribution than that of great genius other the revolution because of it revolution and robot access new legal in the of them similarly new type of question challenging almost every dis academic discipline due to increasing technological complexity on how it is becoming highly complex beyond comprehension on um, uh, for this you may read the book is friends the third one and this is challenge from robots as adversaries this is very important as dominant intelligence this has four parts as dominant intelligence with no feeling or empathy or compassion job was an end professor speaking to can unintended consequences intended with malice framed by someone for the fact and see is not the greatest artificial intelligence only two persons marvin minsky and john mccarthy everybody who is well recognized in artificial intelligence either they are students of these persons or their grand students or great grand students what marvin minsky says will robots inherit the earth yes but they will be our children note what marvin minsky says will robots in us yes but they will be our children Now we read on the right hand side there for in respect of our intelligence that is wrong we must feel happy now as we do when our biological children replace and surpass us in achievements but there is a question mark technologically robots are for future of spring of course not biological but intellectual of spring and intellectual successor that is intellectually superior of two types of our of spring intellectual and biological but this does not mean that our biological ones will not remain any more as is the case with animal kingdom surviving despite human superior intellectual intellectual superior we have subjugated the rest of the animal kingdom to miserable lives displaced their natural habitats kill them whenever and whatever way we like for pleasure or food hence we can we ensure our intellectual offspring being superior will not treat our biological offspring in the future sorry hence this is the scenario we have 
change the animal world. Robert may change a slight that and even in verse. So whatever Marvin Minsky said, that we should be proud of Roberts, but I have a feeling that I don't disagree with him, but we will have to consider this aspect also, that they will subjugate us like we have subjugated them. Now, friends, I talk the second part, jobs from which human beings are displaced, driverless cars, no human drivers will be required in future, spy cameras and robots opening doors, Machine in general provide artificial eyes, ears, hands and feet. No human security guards required. In China, cobot machines that can work in factories safely along with human beings. Big data algorithm, machine learning, deep learning systems are replacing white collar jobs by thousands to millions soon. A computer at Memorial Sloan Kettering Hospital, New York, named Watson, is recalibrated to act as oncology advisor. That is, in future, oncology advisor may not be required. The Watson-like systems are being designed and developed to work as legal advisors, financial advisors, as educational counsel, all sorts of activities requiring high-order human cognitive skills and capabilities. All of them may not be required because of all these work much more efficiently, tirelessly, and without creating human-like problems, and much more cheaply. The situation is developing globally due to the displaced beings from jobs, all types, blue collar. All of us, at least for the sake of our future generations. The situation is partially arising out of the human greed. I repeat, the situation is partially arising out of human greed for cheap labor provided by the robbers. This onslaught of machine on human jobs may be stopped or at least retarded through concerted efforts on the part of whole humanity by communicating our concerns in the matter of political and industrial leadership across the world. In these three dignitaries, Hawking, Elon Musk, and Bill Gates are very well known the world around. And since 2018, 10, these people are informing about and crusading dangerous consequence of progress in artificial intelligence and hence robotics also. All human roles being usurped by machine. Young people, after having trained for 20 years, are jobless as machine. Them subservient to the machine. Is this possible to have non proliferative nuclear weapons? Please look at this scenario. AI this is not what I'm saying. This is what Stephen and Bill Gates are saying that can we have a non-AI treaty. Friends, next I come to unintended harmful consequences of the technology. History is full of instances when it was conceived as purely innocuous and beneficial, but later turned out to be very harmful. Also, it is also found that more subtle and advanced technology, as the technology more subtle and more advanced, it has the more potential for unintended harmful consequences. Extrapolating as robotics is one of the, if not the most advanced technology so far, potential for its unintended consequences is much more than those of all the previous technology, some of which I'll quote hurriedly. Friends, automobiles started, but these have become the source of pollution. In August 2011, 100 kilometric traffic jam was there for 10 days in China. Industrial revolution, vanishing of forests of various species, fauna and flora, squirrels almost vanished in just a couple of years in Delhi. Global warming, ozone layers, Bhopal gas accident. Punjab, known for green revolution, is now known as cancer belt because of the overuse of fertilizers. Atomic energy used for generating electricity led to Chernobyl nuclear accident. 
हाइड्रो इलेक्ट्रिक पावर जेनरेशन लेड टू केदारनाथ ट्रेसी मेडिकल सर्जरी विच इज यूज फॉर ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ नंबर ऑफ सीरियस प्रॉब्लम इज ऑल्सो यूज फॉर स्टीलिंग किडनीस इन विट्रो सर्जरी फॉर ट्रीटिंग डिजीज ऑफ येट टू बी बॉर्न चिल्ड्रन इज यूज फॉर किलिंग गर्ल चाइल्ड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक नाउ फ्रेंड्स इलेक्ट्रॉनिक टेंस टेररिस्ट एंड बाउंसर्स थाउजेंड ऑफ ट्रीज आर गोइंग टू ट्रीट आर्मीज अनएथिकल मार्केटिंग प्लीज पे अटेंशन टू द लास्ट वन Steve Jobs in a recorded interview has said that he did not allow any of his three children to use iPod more than 3 hours a week and that also under his supervision but he so unabashedly marketed the same to be used by children of others this is most unethical marketing which is done because of the technological advancement this is the news of October 21 2020 that is two days earlier the fake new sexual harassment menace the fake submitted its nudes from regular photos around 1 lakh 4000 women have been targeted and their images shared publicly you can see the sort of situation which is arising Is that the activities are carried? Please note it at massive scale, with little physical efforts, and so much to reach almost every person in every corner of the world. Please see it. why it is happening. These dogs are set on the internet. Knows we are a dog. The anonymity provided by internet has increased many folds irresponsible behavior because of safety cover provided by the internet saying and doing any damn thing which otherwise nobody dares to say human beings distinguish themselves from the animal thing any other in being more responsible but the responsibility now because of the anonymity anonymity of internet has gone our behavior become worse than the any animals researchers please note this this is very important researchers in social sciences and psychology atc have found that the impact of technology on our social mental physical and environment health can be devastating if you don't keep ourselves in check this is the conclusion of 1.5 million dollar project by robert prout social psychologist professor at carnegie mellon university it is a paradox that internet that is supposed to connect people again i repeat it is paradox that the internet that is supposed to connect people we found reason from isolate has been found by research and social sciences that it leads to lack of social skills obesity depression poor sleep habits pollution increased bullying lack of privacy higher level of deceit uh, neck head pain short and attention span friends they have been who had seen such type of things happening much before that time i talk of three visionaries could see the present around 1900 even friends a disillusionment with technology among intellectuals including even leading contributors to modern it Machine stopped by E. M. Forster. E. M. Forster is famous for his "Passes to India" film. He warned, "It is a long story. I can't tell." A mother and son. They don't want to meet, but meet because they are so much groomed by the technology that they cannot come out, and otherwise the sun rays will kill them because they are so much protected by the technology. The future doesn't need us. This is as written by Bill Joy. who is father of the unix operating system and mechanization of society where you can have a, uh, um, <coughs> a food of exactly 249 grams but what is the use of that friends these are three visionaries who saw much ahead what earlier they saw even in 19th century technology is affecting everyone at gigantic scale Persistent stealthily. Please note stealthily.
come to think of technology as a social phenomena, as a part of social science, not after some technology. Generally, what the social scientists do, they study the technological phenomena only when the technology has been introduced. Now the time has come when the social scientists, engineers, and scientists, etc., they study it before the potential danger is already there. One of the reasons for unanticipated concept is unification of technocratic view peddling social. If instead of two cultures of academics, techniques, social studies department hardly interact, there is need for a unified a work actually uh, to be done. Friends, I may tell why Newton's work is so much respected. Newton actually, not for other reasons, Newton actually unified two theories. One was celestial and the other was terrestrial. Terrestrial was proposed by Galileo and uh, celestial was proposed by... So he unified the two theories. That is, the, whether it is a motion on Earth or in space, the rules are same. In order to speculate that robotics concerning consciously man-mediated intelligence they need to do to us biological, let us look at the evolution of uh, this is very important that why we have to be careful because now the technology is coming. Anyway, these are the sum of the three elements that is now inside critique and transfer redefinitions have been lost. These need to be. Now, we look at technology from a different, beyond definition, how it evolved, because so many also. Drivers of technology empowers, and it is becoming star and star. First, earlier, we used to fight self, then we used stone, then animal domestication, then mechanical, nuclear. Now, electronic tools are coming for fighting. Currency, barter, bullion, use gold and silver. Then we use coins, votes, electronic money, communication, pers person to per. Then we send use poster and now electronic company that is becoming stress this effect is ever increasing first only face to face to individual and now in and so many now i'm to the last so in the peer section what i emphasize is that there is need for unified approach to handle the menace of technology in which the intellectuals from humanities, from social sciences, from sciences, from engineering, must collaborate together from the very first initial step in order to find the so that the technology for the purpose of benefit of human humanity. Lastly, I come to challenges and research issues for both. In the robots will be ubiquitous as our mobiles are. Please note it. Any robots will be like uh, uh, our mobile phone. They will be in billions. In future robots will be as ubiquitous as our mobiles. And also out of these robots, many will be social robots, having additional features of mobility and need for having as frequent in interactions with human beings as is at present between human beings. For social robots, for smooth interaction, it is essential to embed some human-like characteristics like sociability, empathy, and common sense. Now I'm talking, friends, about the challenge for research in robotics because robotics will be, robots will be as common as human beings. They will be roaming about the streets like other human beings and therefore they must behave in such a way that there is no clashes of robots and human beings. And in this respect, what are the efforts required for in robotics, which we call robots? First of all, our robots must have common sense. Common sense is acquired mostly unconsciously, used both consciously and unconsciously. 
Most of it is acquired unconsciously through interaction with the world around. It forms a very large part of human knowledge. This implicit knowledge has to be explicated for any way to explain it. Friends, what is common sense? A person dies only once. I have never read any of the common sense that a person dies only once. All parts of the body of a person are where the person is. We are not read in any book, but it is we know everybody, but never we explicitly mention to anybody. We never talk of this statement. A stone is not hurt when hit, but a dog is hurt when hit. Only a living entity can feel hungry and eat. Water flows downhill. A rope is used to pull, but not to push. Friends, what I want, I want to emphasize is that these are the facts which we acquire unconsciously. And there are billions of such facts. And these facts help us in almost at every instant in our life in tackling problems of the world. I give a how it solves it. For example, here there is a doctor and this common sense which is by us. You can see me, myself, Manoharla, I call, I call it Dr. Robert, I have seriously injured my right leg. Please help me in my home, in my house in Delhi. Robert, doctor, but sir, where is your right leg which is injured and is to be treated? Now here, human doctor will not ask any question because human doctor have the common sense that parts of the body are there where the body is. But this type of things have to be explicitly embedded in a Robert and there are billions and billions of such facts which we never read in books, which are we are never told explicitly, but we use in everyday life at every step in order to tackle the problem of life. These have to be embedded. This is one of the biggest challenge. What is the biggest challenge I'm telling for making about social is embed common sense. Is another use of Robert. There is saying ki us teni ko mat kato jis pe bat. But this fact has to be told to a Robert, otherwise it will injure itself. This is the common sense in Robert. Friends, this is another common sense, or it is rather another challenge for Robert. The vision understanding, visual understanding, is another. Challenge for developing robots. Further, if you want, friends, I'm going to finish within a two or three minutes, but please read this. Further, if you want some of our robots to be scientists, I repeat, further, if you want some of our robots to be scientists, probably the most dangerous and most foolish thing for humans to do, we may impair the what's the faculty of biggest asset. Our biggest asset so far is finding principles. We cannot fly, but we can make flying machines by finding principles. We cannot see beyond pictures, but we can make telescopes locating objects millions of miles through microscope and telescopes. Again, by knowing principles of we cannot have heavy loads beyond some hundred kilometers, but we can make machines which can lift. Again, by knowing the principles, cannot move too fast, but can build vehicles. Again, knowing the principles of mobility. We are good at finding principles, embed into appropriate materials to get a machine that can fly, lift heavy loads, etc. Furthermore, even if robot may match human beings in finish, Finding principles, it does not and cannot so far you know the appropriate situation in which to apply the unknown. Summarizing the 
Much of the research and development in robotics today is focused on making robots autonomous by improving sensors and enabling more intelligent control of robots. This is one area of research. Vision in particular is a very active field of research because cameras are cheap and the information they can acquire is very rich. Another active field of research addresses the interaction between humans and robots. This involves embedding of common sense Socially and, and. Friends, finally, I conclude my lecture. Summarizing technology, including robotics, enables humanity to do at massive scale and global level whatever it was able to do earlier at small scale and local levels. Hence, this newfound human capability has equal potential both for welfare and destructive purposes. Each of the opportunity challenges it is up to the humanity. So far, I think robotics is not beyond control. We may take some action if it is possible. Otherwise, it may be too late. References. Uh, thank you so much, sir. It was a wonderfully informative session. Thank you, please. Uh, if you have any questions, I am a bit hard of hearing, so you may uh, give it. Uh, uh, so, should I first of all escape and uh, then uh, if uh, you want to. Yeah, you, please, please uh, stop sharing. Stop sharing. You oh, can. Okay, okay. Uh, just, yeah. just one minute. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so again, I'll have to go there. Stop uh, sharing is. Uh, can I cut it? Danny, uh, you you go on the top of the screen at the center. Uh, you will see uh, to the right buttons. hand side. Uh, yeah, should I do on the, cut on the right hand side. Cut on the right on the side. Go on the top of the screen. Multiple buttons. Where uh, from you can stop sharing. Uh, yeah. Stop stop it has now it has Can been done. Go? So, Doctor Ritika, yeah, Doctor Ritika has noted down some questions. Of course, ah, please. Your talk was so elaborated that I, ah. I think uh, many of the questions have already been answered because the advantage to the teacher is that the teacher considers all possible <laughs> complexity of the problem right in the advance. But nonetheless, few questions from few interested participants are there. Dr. Ritika, put forward it. Yeah, Dr. Ritika. Huda sahab, Huda sahab, I am here for Sari Manohar Lal ji. Ji, ji. Oh, Manohar Lal ji. Oh, oh, oh. Professor, Professor Ansari is the executive vice president of, vice chairman of, uh, chairperson of IEEE Delhi section as well. Nisi, I am very well acquainted with Professor Manohar Lalji. We have very old friendship, you know, around uh, 15 to 20 years. Manohar Lalji, you have been so experienced and your lecture was so nice that probably we don't require to ask any question. But however, as you style hai, और आपने इस सब्जेक्ट के ऊपर जो आपकी नॉलेज और गहराई है वो अब शायद इसकी जरूरत नहीं छोड़ती कि कोई सवाल पूछा जाए फिर भी बच्चे हैं अगर उन्होंने कुछ पूछा है तो जरूर उनको मौका दिया जाएगा बट आई एम रियली वेरी हैप्पी आई आई हैव जॉइंड दिस लेक्चर ऑफ भारती विद्यापीठ आफ्टर अ लॉन्ग टाइम बिकॉज़ वी आर आल्सो आवरसेल्व्स इन्वॉल्वड इन आवर ओन लेक्चर्स सवाल मैंने जिम्मेदारी पूरी कर ली जी सर जी जी जरूर जरूर डॉक्टर ट्रैफिक रूल्स 
Do I have understood the question? But once again, please repeat. Yes, sir. Uh, do you think self-driving cars have a good have a good future in our country in terms of compatibility with the traffic rules? Anyway. <laughs> But means uh, definitely technology advancing very much, very fast, and uh, probably some sort of uh, switch in the sense that sharing, for example, and on the other hand, the governments also should take action in this way, that people start boarding buses, etc., sharing vehicles and all. This is, I think, one of the possible solutions for this one. But otherwise, uh, uh, well, uh, <laughs> I can't say much about this, how the future evolves itself. For example, driver race, cars are coming and many other things are there. But one thing, Dr. Ritika, which strikes me just now, that the world, it has many side effects, disastrous effects also. But at least so far your traffic problem is concerned. Because with the passage of time, the work from home culture definitely advanced further. And this may Another thing which strikes me is that there is a sort of peak of something. Once the peak and inflation comes and nature develops such a situation, problem takes another form. That is the transport problem may take another form also. So this is my opinion work from home may be the solution for it. I am not very sure whether my answer satisfies it. Hello. Uh, thank you, sir. Another participant? How should uh, I... Uh, your how should our society? Breaking. Yeah, please once again. Uh, how should our society be human relevant in the era of increasing dependence on robotics? Oh, that's how. How should a society keep to... human labor relevant in the era of increasing dependence on robots and robotics. In the era of increasing... How should a society... Keep human labor relevant. Human remain relevant. In the era of... Increasing... Robotics. Sir, simply speaking, uh, when robotics uh, is uh, becoming so important, uh, will humans still remain relevant? Uh, Dr. Ritika, uh, this is uh, both our earlier question was also very important in the beginning, sir. And this is also very important. Now, in order to answer this question, I have to speak some bitter truths also. And uh, something, so far, Dinosaurs ruled the earth for 13.5 million years and all of a sudden disappeared 6.5 million years. Something happens. Nature changes. So one aspect of my answer, which may be very sort of sad news for human beings, is that nature is changing. And probably through our own intelligence, we are getting replaced by ourselves. Marvin Minsky has said, 
the people who are much going to be much more intellectual, intelligent than us, the robots made in earth, and we should be proud because they are also our, they are creation of our mind, intellect. But I have also mentioned that this does not mean that our physical children will not remain. And they will be chaining them like the animals we are chaining. That is, even the dinosaurs ruling 30.5, they went away, the rule of change is there. Secondly, Dr. Ritika, it is a philosophy. And you know, Einstein and <coughs> Heisenberg, they, they were of two different opinions. Einstein's the world is deterministic, whereas the Heisenberg said that the world is non deterministic. What does this mean in this particular context? In this particular context, it means Einstein was. <coughs> Uh, earlier, Newton was also deterministic, and uh, uh, even your, I don't know, Gödel, you know, he was a great philosopher of the last century. He was also deterministic. But on the other hand, some people were not particularly this man, and both were Nobel laureates. So if the world is deterministic, the technology is also deterministic. It will run its own course, whether we desire it or not. But if it is non-deterministic, only then the question of human leadership arises. As I mentioned, Bill Gates and others, Stephen Hawking and all that, they have warned us that it is going to happen. So in the case, if the world is, even the philosophers don't know whether the world is deterministic or not, but if it is non-deterministic, then following the advice of these great people, Bill Gates, etc. We may take right action and we may create an environment. For example, I give you, Korea is a country where the maximum robots are used. But you know they have used a technique. They have made robot techs, which is almost equal to the salary of a laborer. So if this sort of steps are taken, by the political leadership, and if they have the courage of doing this, then I think the robot onslaught may be stopped. But if, according to the Einstein, if the nature is deterministic, the technology is deterministic, then our days are numbered. So I think it is not a pleasant thing to say and listen, but I think this is there. Absolutely true, sir. I completely agree. Uh, it was a very informative session in which you covered almost almost all the questions that have been uh, asked by the participants. I thank you so much once again for this wonderful session. I now request uh, Professor Hodder with the Institute of Computer Applications and Management to kindly present a certificate to Sir as a token of remembrance. Thank you, Mr. Professor Manohar Lalji. Anji. This, this certificate is not a certification. This is the remembrance. <laughs> remembrance that you have delivered this wonderful and fantastic webinar right from uh, earlier uh, civilizations till now. Such a topic on which we have to see that what is going to be the future and to which extent these uh, shortcomings, these limitations of the robotics, particularly which you have shown related to common sense will be addressed in coming days, might be with the help of cognitive computing, etc. Because otherwise, the robot will cut the same branch where the robot will be. <laughs> and then, then, then it will be a big challenge. And we'll keep on asking the patient, where is your leg? <laughs> so, Dr. Sir, uh, I would like to say a few words. Yep. Uh, Professor Hoda Sir. and other senior friends, I'll take five minutes to say what yeah, I'm Please, saying. most welcome, sir. Please. Uh, I'll tell you a small story. You know, Ray Kurzweil is a great technologist. 
He has 420 patents in his name. Ray Kurzweil is one of the well-known artificial intelligence and he is a man who proposes that let the robots take over. He has written a number of books also. And in one of the books, the machine, he, then he said that the humanity cannot be surpassed by robots in 1990. In 1999, he said a spiritual machine. And in that, he said that the robots are going to definitely surpass the humanity. But I am going, I have mentioned this in another context. In this book, on the first page, he writes, please, I'll take two, four, four families. He writes a small story. A drunkard has whole of his life drunk and played gamble, gambled, etc. Did nothing else. He and he was taken by the young dudes to a place which was scintillating, beautiful place, the best place which he has never seen. And the best possible wines wafting outside that. Girls were dancing, everything was happening. He thought that why I have been brought, I have done nothing in my life. Why I have been brought here? They may be giving me a glimpse of it, probably. Once I gave one pesa to a beggar, and I think they may give him, because of that, they are going to give me a glimpse of it one. So he entered. To cut the story short, he was given money, he gambled, it always doubled, he asked for the best wine, it doubled, etc. And after some time, after six months, he said that this place does not belong to me. He sent me to the hell. The gatekeeper said that this is the hell where people don't do anything. In the heaven, people do something. Now I come to my story. Friend, you have given me an opportunity which kept me busy for 21 days. This provided me an opportunity to remain active in this old age. And this is the biggest gift you and the listeners and other dignitaries here have given. This certificate definitely matters, but more it matters that you gave me this opportunity to remain busy for 21 days. I worked 15 hours a day. I enjoyed my life. Thank you all of you. Thank you so uh, much, sir. Thank you so much. It was primarily our privilege. You so, here, and we know even if we have not given you this opportunity, you have you would have worked with the same zeal, fifteen to sixteen hours a day. I have seen you working since last twenty five years, but it was primarily our privilege, sheer our privilege. Okay. Thank, you. thank you so much, sir. Thank you. So, thank you so much. All of you, I thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir. I would. Yes. Thank you, Vita. Thank you. Professor A. I would now request Professor A. K. Saini, Vice President, CSI and IET, and Dean University School of Management Studies, GGS IPU, to kindly propose his vote of thanks. Dr. Ritika, I think Professor Saini got disconnected or is here. He uh, sir, I can see him as a Thank you. Sir. Ah, he was in between, but then he got disconnected, I think. So and the rest, I will take, I will take that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Aap sab jo hai. Dr. Sahab, you all are the same. You 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 are the same. At least 20 years younger than me. So I am proud that you are the same. You are the same. You are the same. I am really proud. You are the same. You are the same. You are the same. So I am really proud of my children. Thank our privilege, sir. Our privilege. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have the privilege to have you today. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you, please. Thank you. And we'll have you we'll have you again for any of our next work coming with you. Kabi we have to go, Mirko Pandra Gandhi come karnega mukamilega.
और उससे भी बड़ा उससे भी बड़ा बच्चों के साथ बच्चों से मिलने का जो सौभाग्य है वो उससे भी बड़ा सौभाग्य थैंक यू ऑल ऑफ यू सो थैंक यू आई टेक लीव फ्रॉम यू थैंक यू ओवर ओवर 450 पीपल फ्रॉम डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द कंट्री अटेंडेड दिस वेबिनार ऑन ऑल द मीडियम्स राइट सर थैंक यू सर सो डियर पार्टिसिपेंट्स now now we have converted this uh, webinar meeting room into a call center